Rich homie Quan death revealed on reasons why. So the reason why the autopsy is out. Um, everybody kind of had their thoughts on this situation when it come down to the autopsy. You know, a lot of people threw things out like fentanyl and, um, you know, codeine, you know, uh, uh, Ativan, uh, you know, Ambien. People was throwing out all... People was just throwing out all type of things. People was looking at old videos of Rich Homie Quan and seeing the type of drugs he was talking about. Um, it's, it's, it's been a lot of stuff out there. But let's go on and read what what was the cause and then go into it a little bit. So Rich Homie Quan's cause of death revealed a cause of death for Rich Homie Quan, the Atlanta rapper who died last month at the age of 34. Has been revealed. Quan, born Demetrius Devante Lamar, died of an accidental drug overdose. The Fulton County Medical Examiner's Office confirmed to USA Today Wednesday the manner of death was ruled an accident. Numerous drugs were found in Quan's system, including fentanyl. Well, it was fentanyl, alprozolam, codeine, promethazine, and THC. Um, oh. Al our prozolem is something like a um it's like a Xanax. Yeah. You know, for the people who, who don't know, you know, uh that's like a Xanax. All right, according to an autopsy report, additionally the rapper's body showed no signs of trauma upon examination. Wow. So they say no sign of trauma. So it was just overdose. It was just he took too many drugs. It wasn't he slipped because his brother said that he found him on the kitchen floor. So it wasn't, oh, he slipped and hit his head too hard or um, it was a setup, you know, someone forced something inside of him. You know, because you was hearing stuff like, hey, people may have thought it was a setup, you know, and stuff like that. You know, so it was all kind of things that were out there, you know. But um, when it come down to it, we know that it was just an overdose. Took things he wasn't supposed to be taking, man. Um it's sad, man. What are your before I get my thoughts? What are your thoughts on this whole situation, bro? With Rich Homie Thug, Rich Homie Quan, my bad, Rich Homie Quan. Yeah, you know, first off, R.P. Rich Homie Quan. You know, but you know, um, it's not surprising. You know what I'm saying for something like this to happen, him to go through overdose, man. We've been dealing with a lot of this lately in the past, like couple of years, ever since the COVID. You know what I'm saying? Uh, a lot of overdoses people doing these drugs but i mean one thing i did know that rich homie kwan was doing drugs you know what i'm saying off the mollies always talked about how he was on the mollies yeah, and how he yeah. addicted to him and how he loved him mm -hmm. he loved to pop him you know so i mean somebody that's addicted to drugs and love to do drugs i mean hey if they go out buy the drug then they died out they went out the way they wanted to go out yeah, you know what yeah, i'm saying yeah. some people that's how it is with, with they like some people just i'm ready to go and i want to go out the way i want to go out you know what I'm saying? So, hey, I can't, you know, uh, uh, I mean, if that's what he chose. That's the life he chose. That's the route he chose, you know? You yeah. know, we all, we all got a choice. We all have a choice, you know what I'm saying? Um, if, you know, to do what we want to do, you know? So if that's the way he chose, then yeah. Yeah. But RP, you know what I'm saying? It's sad to hear the brother went out like that, you know? But, uh, yeah, that's the life he chose, so. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think that he chose to to have an overdose but but i get what you're saying you mean like hey he knew there was consequences to popping pills and taking drugs that's what you mean are you are you saying that you feel like he was he was ready to go out that way like he, what i mean by this i mean by like i'm pretty sure he had times that he overdosed before you know what i'm saying by doing probably the same drugs so he know that at one point he could almost lost his life before so for him to go through it again i'm pretty sure he knows the consequences that comes with that, that could happen, you know? So I'm sure, the only thing I'm trying to say is that I'm pretty sure he knew what was going to happen. So if he, I'm pretty sure, I, I, I don't think he wanted to die, but if if he if he was still doing and, and the drugs that he knew that could take him out, then, hey, I mean, I don't know what to say, man. That's the way he yeah. wants to go. That's yeah. The only, that's the only way you can't put it. Yeah, yeah. No, okay. So I, I get it now. You saying he knew the consequences? That's that's what I thought you were saying. Cause at yeah. first I thought you was kind of like, I thought you was kind of saying like, hey, he was ready to go. So that's no. why. 
Okay. Now, now if it was I, his first time I, doing I, drugs, then I'd say he wasn't ready to go. He was just experimenting something that just went wrong, and then, hey, you know, that's what happened. But I'm just saying for him to be on the drugs, you know, the type of problems the drugs brings, you know, what could happen, and he actually still did it and still was on it for t over 10 years. I mean, he knows what's up. You know, one day he's not going to wake up. I'm pretty sure he knew that. You know what I'm saying? Anybody yeah, I, I mean, but that. but I don't think that he he purposely tried to kill himself. I, I'm not I don't, I'm not gonna put that out there. Yeah, I'm not gonna say like, oh, rich homie Quan was trying to take himself out. You know, nah, nah, nah. I mean, now I, I I will say this. Of course, I believe the majority of people who who take drugs it, it rec recreationally understand there's consequence to it. One hundred percent. I I don't believe there's too many people out there who are taking drugs and and saying, oh, I could pop. 10 to 15 of these pills and nothing going to happen. I'm good. I'm going uh, 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 I'm I'm going I'm going to live. And, unless they don't know or not, or understand anything when it comes down to popping pills or taking drugs. That's different. But everybody understand the consequence. I believe everybody who overdosed or the majority of people who overdosed knew there was consequence to taking it. So, I'm with you on that, but I, I want to throw out some facts that people probably don't know. You know, in in a in a last since they said since two thousand and two, the number one cause of 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 deaths, you know, for people under the age of forty have been overdoses. Yeah, the number one cause That's what I was have saying. been overdosing. You know, uh, so we got to understand that we're in a in a place in a time right now where people ain't getting their drugs from the doctors anymore. People are getting their drugs off the streets. It's easy to get drugs off the streets nowadays. I mean. There's even places online that people could go and look for people who are selling certain things and get drugs. So I think that it's important to talk about this because I think everybody out there who got kids, everybody out there who 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 knows someone who 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 taking something and don't know how they get it, I think it's important for everybody out there to know that it's it's very easy. It's it's easier to get some pills than it is to get weed and you got dispensaries everywhere. I believe it's easier to get some pills. It's it. I'll say out of every five of your friends, one of those friends got to connect to get some pills. Anything you want. Xanax, codeine, cough syrup, whatever you want. Out of every five friends, there's one friend who know to connect. Or know, or this is what happens a lot. And, I, and I'm putting stuff out there because I think people should know this. Nowadays, People are connected to individuals who got the the uh, prescription to get the the medication, and they slinging it for them. They got the prescription to get just about whatever you want, and because they not taking them, they trying to get paid. You know, so this is what's going on. So this is why you see so many overdoses because when it comes down to people that are young, you ain't trying to go to no doctor. You just want what you want, and you want to keep it pushing. Most of the time, you don't even need it. But you're taking it because, hey, that's what you want. People do what you want to do. But I'm just saying we are in a time where this is why this is the number one cause of death when it comes down to people under the age of 40. So I just want people to know how serious it is. And also, too, it's one of the hottest topics in hip hop. I mean, am, am I ma am I making that up, bro? It's like this is not one of the hottest topics in hip hop. Talking about what you popping, what you taking, what you drinking, right? Man, you're not wrong. You're not wrong at all. Not wrong, right? Facts. That's what I'm saying. I mean, the number let's the number one. I'm gonna say the the number one or at least a rapper who was in the top three rappers in the past ten years. His number one topic on his songs was about taking drugs and popping pills. Future. Yeah. So let's keep it real. That's why a lot of the rappers who done lost their life said they looked up the future. So I, I'm not bringing this up to like try to preach to anybody or, or or to tell anybody like, hey, you know what I'm saying? You better stop or this is going to happen. No, I'm not doing it for that. I just want people to be aware and understand and know like, hey, there are serious consequences to it. You can't lose your life. People lose their life every day when it comes down to it. And people under the age of 40 are not living because they're overdosing. A lot of, you know, that's the number one cause of death for people under the age of 40, you know? And so I think it's important to always talk about these topics, right? But I also say this, and then you can tell me what you think about this, bro. Mm -hmm. I think we I think we get into the place to where 
Okay, let me say this first. My, I believe music controls the direction that the next generation goes in. Am I wrong or am I right? Yeah. Music controls the world, so yeah, you're right. Music, music controls it, right? Okay. So, we're saying that because that's what I believe. I believe that what... And, 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 and when I say that, it's because the majority are into hip-hop. The majority are into rap when it comes down to kids under the age of 18. They love hip-hop. People love urban culture and everything like that, right? So, I think the only way we get a handle on this situation is if, and, and it may sound crazy to most, but you start saying that people should get charged for murder lyrics. What I mean by murder lyrics, hey, if you if you putting lyrics out there that could lead to death, then if you if you put that out there, you could get charged for it. I know it sounds crazy, but I'm just saying that that'll stop people like Future from putting out songs. Molly Perkins said, da, 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 da. it'll stop it. Am I saying that's going to happen? I'm not saying that's going to happen. I'm just saying there have to be consequences that the rappers and people who are leading the charge when it comes down to this, it have to be consequences that they feel, see, or believe can happen. If they putting this type of stuff out there and to be real, they're not even doing it. But the kids are. The youth are. So until it gets to a place where. They're like, OK, when it comes down to music, there's a such thing called murder lyrics. If you're talking about this or that. You could be charged. Because your lyrics is a weapon. And that weapon is killing a lot of people when it comes down to the youth. A lot of people under the age of 40, mostly people under the age of 25, are dying because of your lyrics. So a lot of people may not agree. I, I'm not saying that it's a fully thought out, you know, uh, 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 um, a fully thought out thought. I'm just saying, that may be the only thing that can stop this epidemic of overdoses when it comes down to the youth. That may be what it is. I mean, you got to have something set up called murder lyrics. I mean, do you think that that's you think I'm sounding crazy, bro? <laughs> bro, I ain't going to lie, man. <laughs> if that was true and it passed along like that, every hip hop artist will be arrested today. <laughs> so, that'd be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like uh, I mean that'd be a good way to, to stop people telling lies too because a lot of people be talking all this and, and don't really be about it a lot of people rap about drugs don't really do drugs people rap about killing don't really kill you know what I'm saying a lot of these dudes be flaunting just trying to go have the clout you know what I'm saying that's all it is I mean we seen what Mick Mills we seen what happened to Mick Mills you know what I'm saying did all that front yeah. on his records talking all that gangster crap on his records and look at what happened when 6 9 approached him man you know what Back. I'm saying ran like a little girl Call for his little bodyguards to stop it. You know, so I'm just trying to say, like, a lot of these rappers be lying. You know, a lot of these artists, I say, be lying about what they talk about in their rap. So, I mean, that would be a good thing. But I put like this. I mean, it was talking about drugs or anything got to do with street talk. You know, at least it could be like, you know, uh, what they've been through. Like a story they tell and what, you know, how they came overcame it or something like that. You know, yeah, it could yeah. be. Yeah, it could be. Be some lyrics coming out like that, you know, just talking about just the past, you know, what I've been through and I overcame it. You know what I'm saying? Just a story, like a story like that, like you know what I'm saying, like a lyrical story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's something I can cry, I can listen to and be like, damn, you overcame that. That's you know, that's impressive. You know, so yeah. I mean, that's that's cool. Oh, yeah. that's the way hip hop was at one point in time. Yeah. It was about the, it was about your story. You know, yeah. artists like Ice Cube. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Scarface. Pac, you know, it was people who came out with stories and that's what it was about. It wasn't about, see, see, now music, music is all about what I'm saying, you're going to do it. Yeah. You know, it's follow me music. Mm -hmm. It's do exactly what I'm saying. If I'm saying this in the club, recite these lyrics and you better have in your hand what I'm saying because that's what's popping right now. 
So that's what I'm saying. We're at a place right now where they may have to put something in there called murder lyrics. I know a lot of people will go against it. You're going to have a lot of people saying, dude, you sound crazy or whatever. But, I mean, it's either that or it's nothing that's about to stop what's going on. The only thing that I think could stop it is hip-hop. I don't care what nobody say. Hip-hop have a stronger hold on the youth than what people really think. A very strong hold on the youth. People want to be like Future, Drake, Kendrick. Jay-Z. If you go to a school right now in an urban community, you can even go to one of these sur suburban schools. Forget urban community. Go to one of these suburban schools. Go down and ask all of them kids in that class. Go to one classroom. Let's say a classroom full of 40 kids. Ask all them kids who they want to be like, who they look up to, and what they want to do. At least half is going to say they look up to someone who's a music artist, and a lot of them going to say they want to be a rapper or do music. That's a fact. That's where we're at. So if they listen to a lot of these artists who are talking about, hey, you better pop this, pop a Molly, pop a Murdy, pop a Percocet, pop a da da da. What, do you, what in the heck you think they're going to want to do when they have an opportunity to pop one? They're going to pop it. So I'm just saying, you know, hey. At the end of the day, I, I get tired of seeing this. I, I don't I don't want to be on here preaching about it. But there's nothing that can stop it unless the people who are leading the charge with talking about it have some type of consequence. The only way you stop things is by people seeing the consequence to it and saying, OK, I bet it. Chill. A lot of these kids look up to these rappers more than their parents. So if the rappers say do it, they're going to do it. They're going to tell their parents, ah, da, da, da. you know, they're they not going to listen to their parents. You know, we're we not in a place like when we grew up where you got, you got whoop with an extension cord or with a belt or, you know, you had to, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, pull your shirt up and whoosh. we're not in that world no more. These kids in a second and say, I'm going to go call the cops on you. We're in a different place. So they're not looking up to you parents. They're looking up to the rappers. So, hey, and don't get me wrong. We black. We from the hood. We come from nothing. So I love it. I love hip hop. I'm in a different place now, but I love hip hop. I was doing it myself at a high level, but I'm just speaking facts because what matters to me more is the youth. What matters to me more is seeing these young kids grow up and seeing people live out their full lives and not be taken out of here because of some drugs, overdosing, and everything like that. So that's what I'm just tired of seeing. And it's going to take someone close to someone to be a, to, to, to where people are then going to start to sit back and think about it more. Don't wait for that. That's what it takes a lot of to, uh, for a lot of people. They wait till there's someone close to them that they can see, oh, wow, this really happens. I'm just saying, man. I mean, you got any last thoughts on this, bro? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I mean, all I like to listen to, bro, is just real music. Just really be, we really talk about who you are in your raps. You know what I'm saying? If you're rapping, doing music, you know what I'm saying? Or your life story that's real. You know what I'm saying? Not no stories, not nothing made up, not because you seen that person or your brother went through it or your, 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 your uncle went through it and now you want to, uh, preach about his life on the record. You know what I'm saying? Talk about who you are and what you've been through. I just like real music. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know that's that's one thing I want to put out there too. You know, and uh, and I feel like this too. I mean, hey, if it is an artist rapping about drugs, just being real about who he is, then I think fans should give that rapper help. It should be that's how it should be. Fans yeah. should just be growing up, just coming to shows to be like, look, bro, we gonna, we gonna give you some help. Cause we know you off these mollies and these perks, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's how we you should approach the situation then. You know what I'm saying? If anything, if, it, if it's artist just being real about who he is, hey, I really do this, I really do that's why I'm rapping about it. Hey, fans should just be trying to give that dude help. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That's all that's how I see it too. You feel me? But uh yeah, I just like real music. You feel me? Just be real who you are, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I support you. I mean, think about it, man. You see people bring a therapist to future shows. <laughs> 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 we got a good therapist, <laughs> a drug addiction counselor right here. Future. That'd be a good thing, you right? Know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, <laughs> he'd be up there, Molly Perkins, right here, Future. She got you. She got you, bro. 
Get some oh. help. You know what I'm saying? Hey, but we could have saved the life by doing that. Because look how Juice World went out. We're not with no help. And he was crying Man. for him being on drugs like can't take it no more, you know? Yeah, but imagine yeah, yeah. if it was like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? His fans was giving him support and trying to help him out and help him get over his addiction. And he would have still been alive to this day. So I'm just trying to say that's something that's actually factual. And you know the crazy thing is when it come down to Juice World, yeah. he said that he looked up the future. That was his favorite artist. Man. He said that he wanted to, he said he took his first First, you know, when he was young, he took his he took pills for the first time because of future. Mm, that's crazy, you know. And that's what I'm saying. If stuff like that can't change someone and show them that, hey, this is what is killing the youth. Yeah, it's what's coming out of the mouths of the rappers. I'm just saying. I mean, look at where drill has went. Now all these young kids want to go out there and do a drill. They feel like they cannot be a rapper from the streets unless they did a drill. Because you got rappers like, you know, King Von and others who then came out talking about, well, it was before Von. I ain't going to put that on Von. Mm -hmm. This started, you know, from the Keep Chiefs and all of them way back. You could probably go further back than that. But I'm just saying, once Drill got to where it got, now you got all of these young kids in all type of communities over here talking about they drilling. Gang, gang. Gang, gang. <laughs> Hey, I, I, I got, I got four or five bodies, you know, and all that other type of stuff. Like, that's the that's that's cool now when it comes down to bro, you got bro, they got I, I should find it, right? They got a suburban gang, bro. These uh, this was these were kids, they met each other in in a, in, in a suburban homeschool together. <laughs> about four of them. <laughs> this is like it was like a, it was like a um area like a Beverly Hills. Yeah, they met each other in a homeschool, and they, you know, they love rap, so they wanted to start their own gang, and then they just made made up some rivals from another city and started killing some of the uh, the kids, and and like let's say like Brentwood or something or Melrose. Oh shit! You know what I'm saying? Wow! You know, started killing them, and then going on songs talking about they got a body now. I got a body. Oh shit! You know, jumping in the video. You know how they jumping? Oh, you know what I'm saying? That's <laughs> I'm like crazy. Where, what, what world are we in right now? Man. So that's that's where we at right now. Like if you if you don't if you don't got a body or you ain't doing drugs, they looking at you like, what are you doing rapping? Mm. Ain't that where we at? That's sad. You gotta have a body, or you better be doing some mad drugs. If you're not doing that, we're not signing you. Nope, we're not signing you. We don't want no positive rappers no more. We don't care about your stories. We don't care about none of that. Are you doing drugs and talking about Molly Percocet? Or do you got bodies? If you don't got bodies, you don't got a deal. That's what I'm saying, bro, straight up. We got to get to a place to where you got to call it murder lyrics. And you, if you got murder lyrics... You can catch a case. <laughs> Man. That's the only way we go that's the only way it's gonna stop, you know? I mean, other than that, man, hey, pay attention to what you see people around you who you love doing. Pay attention to the changes. You know, try to speak to them. But nowadays you can't talk to a lot of people. That's why I'm here. I'm tired of trying to talk to people one on one. I'd rather just come on a podcast. If you like it, listen to it. If you don't, go to the next video. Go look at the Molly Percocet video, whatever. You know, but if you want to hear a little bit of game, cool. Come chop it up. Let's have a little fun. You know, but that's where we at.